sometimes viewers get in touch to ask me for recommendations on which hardware they should buy. And I'm always cautious about giving this sort of advice because the right hardware for one person could be completely the wrong choice for another. But I did have an interesting dilemma posed to me recently by a subscriber of the channel. Incidentally, it's uh, good to subscribe. If you're not already supporting the channel, why not give that subscribe button a tickle? I digress though. Uh, my viewer posed his dilemma and he gave me permission to feature his real world scenario in a video. Now Chris, hello Chris by the way, is a video editor and he's working on a 2015 MacBook Pro and after five years of heavy use he's now considering an upgrade. And his dilemma is this, should he buy a 16 inch MacBook Pro and get an Apple Silicon iMac in the future or should he buy the new 27 inch iMac now and get an Apple Silicon MacBook in a year or two? It's an interesting question, so let's explore. Now, like many video editors, Chris is clearly thinking about enjoying the best of both worlds. He wants to have a powerful desktop editing rig and he wants a mobile solution. And that makes a lot of sense given the rise of remote working now. Many professionals want a powerful, permanent setup to take care of the day-to-day -day heavy lifting, but also need a decent mobile workstation for on-site work. Now you might not be in this specific scenario, but perhaps you're just buying one of these machines and you're not sure which one you should go with, or whether you should wait for Apple Silicon. But I think there are some simple answers that will help. Uh, now let's just start with that waiting for Apple Silicon question. If you're a professional user, and by that I mean someone who relies on their computer to earn a living, and specifically a professional user who needs a computer with some decent performance, then Apple Silicon is not going to be an immediate solution for you. Clearly, Apple will focus on the low-end consumer machines first. So later this year, we might see Apple Silicon versions of the MacBook Air, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and possibly also a new 24-inch iMac. So if you're a casual user or a professional who perhaps doesn't need massive performance or professional apps, then it's probably worth just waiting a few months to see what Apple announces. But do remember that early adopters may go through the pain barrier. Now, sure, if you're using your machine mainly for content consumption and general office tasks, then you'll probably be fine. If on the other hand, for example, you're an audio professional who relies on some specific plugins to get your work done, it's probably gonna be a rough ride if you switch early. So pro users who need reliable systems to earn a living probably shouldn't be considering an immediate switch to Apple Silicon. And that brings us neatly back to the dilemma Chris posed. 16 inch MacBook Pro or new 27 inch iMac? Now, of course, there's no question of which machine is more powerful. That's the iMac. But having said that, in many real-world scenarios, will you actually notice the performance difference? It's all well and good looking at benchmarks to evaluate performance, but unless you're planning to sit at your computer with a stopwatch in your hand, the likelihood is that you'll never notice many of these differences. And after all, the 16-inch MacBook Pro is really very good. Now, there is a simple answer to this question. If you need mobility or portability at all, then you've got to go with the MacBook Pro. 27 inch iMacs are not the easiest things to travel with, and uh, I speak from experience there. There's something else to consider as well. Even though Pro users probably wouldn't want to immediately switch to Apple Silicon, the simple truth is that you will need to switch at some point, if you're planning to stick with Apple that is. And since you know that switch is going to happen, it's good to think about when you might want to switch. Take control. The transition period, according to Apple, is two years, and Intel support will likely last at least six years from the point of the last Intel Mac release by Apple. And that could be some way in the future yet, but it may be better to plan a switch somewhere around the two to three year mark. And here's why. You're about to drop a load of cash on an expensive machine, which will need to be replaced at the point you switch. And then you'll surely want to sell it on for the best price possible so that you can buy your shiny new Apple Silicon Mac. And if you wait all the way until the end of Intel support, that resale value will be low. Though, of course, you will have enjoyed the use of the equipment for all of that time. But consider this, there will be a point, and it will probably be just after Apple stopped making Intel Macs, where demand on the used market for Intel machines will be very high. There'll be some users who need or want Intel and they'll be happy to pay for it. And that could be a good time to switch. And with that in mind, which computer will be easier to sell at that point? the 16-inch MacBook Pro or the 27-inch iMac? Well, it's very likely that the demand for the MacBook Pro will be much higher, 
And if it's got a nice spec, it'll probably have held its value better too. When it comes to the expected lifespan of a computer, it's not always based on price. People seem to expect desktop machines to last longer than laptops. A well-specced 27-inch iMac is a good example of a computer that's expected to have a decent lifespan. So with that in mind, when we get to that switching point, will as many buyers be interested in an Intel iMac at that point? Possibly not. So if it was my choice, I'd go with the 16-inch MacBook Pro. But back to the scenario Chris posed. He was looking at a MacBook Pro with one of the eight core options, 64 gig of RAM, two terabyte SSD, and the 5500M with eight gigabytes. Now I think for the same price, a different specification would suit his use case better. So let's take a look at the options. If we go over to the Apple website, and uh, today we're gonna have a look on the US website, so we'll have prices in dollars, why not? Uh, so the first choice that we have is whether or not we're going to spend $200 on a CPU upgrade to the i9-9980HK. Is it worth it? Probably not. It only performs somewhere between 2 and 5% better. Yes, you can see the difference on a benchmark, but in the real world, will you ever notice? I'd say save yourself $200. Next, we move on to the RAM. Now, you can't upgrade the RAM after you've bought the computer, so you've got to get it right at the time you buy it. And for a professional video editor, 16 gigabytes isn't really enough. So should you go for 32 or 64? Well, most people would just never use as much as 64 gigs. They might use a bit more than 32, but does that warrant spending $800 on the upgrade? Now, if you know that you definitely need and will use that much RAM, then sure, spec 64 gigs. But for most pro users, 32 is going to be enough. Now you'll actually get a decent jump in overall system performance if you go from 16 to 32 gigabytes, but there's very little benefit when you go from 32 to 64. So I think Chris might be better trading a saving of $400 here, because with that and the potential $200 saving on CPU, you've got the extra needed to go from that 5500M with eight gigs to the 5600M GPU. It's not really surprising that Chris didn't spec the 5600M. It, it's a huge cost. And you can go out and buy a full desktop 5700 XT card for less than Apple are charging for this upgrade. Uh, but if you think that way, you're probably buying the wrong brand. Uh, instead, think about trading the $600 savings for that GPU upgrade, and you'll get way more than you lose by not having that marginally faster CPU and the RAM that you probably won't use. The 5600M offers more than 40% better performance than the 5500M, and it performs pretty similar to the Pro 580X that you find in the base Mac Pro. Uh, Chris told me that he works in Premiere Pro for video editing, and so additional GPU performance is certainly gonna pay dividends there. And also, that top spec GPU will help the MacBook hold its value on the used market, so you'll get a chunk of that upgrade premium back when you switch later on. So I think I'd buy that 16 inch MacBook Pro, I'd use it everywhere and then maybe wait until the rumored 32 inch Apple Silicon iMac becomes a thing before I buy a desktop. And I'd perhaps also consider swapping the Intel MacBook Pro at that point as well. By that time, we'll know what the Apple Silicon landscape looks like, we'll have a better idea of performance, better idea of software support, and we'll be able to make informed choices. At the end of the day, if it looks bad, there'll be plenty of Intel Macs available on the used market, well, there's always the PC option. Just remember, we all use our computers differently, so don't just take my opinion and run with it. And don't just buy the highest performing components, the biggest numbers, in the hope that you'll be getting loads of performance. You need to do your research, figure out what's important for your use case. I hope this was interesting or in some way useful. And if you'd like to support the channel, please consider using the Amazon link in the description. I've linked to the standard eight core MacBook Pro, and I'm not suggesting that you should go and buy one of those necessarily, but uh, if you're planning to buy something from Amazon anyway, if you click that link first, the channel earns a small commission and it costs you nothing. Uh, the reason I say this is because I've got some big expenses coming up reviewing Apple Silicon computers, so every little helps. Uh, something else that costs you nothing and supports the channel is just one click of that subscribe button. Uh, I wanna thank you for your support. I, I really do appreciate it. And as always, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. I hope it did enough to earn a thumbs up or a thumbs down if that's how you roll, but in any case, see you next time for some more geekery.